The first thing I did after recording yesterday's video, which I don't know if you'll be able to see it in yesterday's video, it was up on my units, it's not anymore, so there's no point taking a look, but was changing my little subscriber counter, which I have just behind me here, built out of Lego bricks from 2.3 to 2.4, because we'd been on 2.4 for a few days, I just completely forgot to change it. And then yesterday, somehow we jumped from 2.4 to 2.5 and right now we're somewhere around 2.56 so it won't be long before this four is becoming a six so i'm going to change it to five right now i still have the bricks from when it was a three because a three is much much easier to turn into a five than a four a three uses the exact same pieces and once i've built this five you'll probably be able to see you just move this I thought I built a two for a second, but I guess a two is just a flipped five. So it looks like a two to me, which is completely confusing. But to take this five and turn it into a three, you just slide the bottom one across and then to turn it into a two, the top one goes over. So I guess two, three and five are really easy to interchange, but I needed these extra four one by twos to turn into a four. And had I left it, not even a day, I did this straight after the video and we actually hit 2.5K subs yesterday so thank you so much to all of you who have subscribed if you haven't then consider hitting the subscribe button i haven't checked for ages how many of you are subscribed so you'll see a little plaque at the bottom of the screen and let's get that to the next five percent up we are a quarter of the way to 10k so i think that is a great start for this video you might be thinking what's so special about 10k well if you haven't been on this channel for a while it's probably been a while since i said at 10k I promise to review the UCS 8080 as long as it's still on shelves and hasn't retired because UCS sets cost a lot of money here on the channel. Now, depending on the UCS sets that come out, that may be upgraded, but for sure there will be a UCS review on this channel for 10k subscribers. And on top of that, I've been thinking a little bit about instructions. And recently, there's been a lot of people asking why I charge for instructions, if I can make them free, which I'm afraid isn't possible on Rebrickable. But your best chance for cheap instructions is joining the membership. 99p, you get a few of the smaller builds. So far, the ATT Walker, the Varactyl Micro Fighter, and also the 1 to 45 scout droidica build, which they're all simple builds, but I'm aiming to fill that a lot more if you are watching this down the line. And for the upper tier, which is only three pound a month, I say only because you have access to every single set of instructions I have ever made, which is gonna cost you a lot, lot more than three pound. If you'd like to see me reviewing and tiering all of the mocks I've made, that was yesterday's video, but today, this is video 366. This is my year's worth of daily uploads and we've actually made it this far. It's a shame that 366 days later, I'm still forgetting to turn off a fan before I record. So hopefully the audio wasn't too bad, but the reason it's 366, not 365, is because this year is a leap year, 2024. If the year is a multiple of four, it's a leap year. We got the extra day in February. So I've actually been going about three quarters of a day over a year of daily uploads. It's a bit surreal to be standing here and recording my 366th video in a row. There was a few times where I didn't record any content on a day. I've had a few days off over the year, which Actually, it doesn't sound like much, but when you come from working in retail, you're used to only having a few days off. And it's been so fun recording all my ideas. The reason I chose daily uploads in the first place was because I knew I had way too many ideas to just do three to five videos a week. I was actually doing weekday videos for quite a few months before I decided to go to daily uploads. And when I started daily uploads, I was always recording the weekends in advance. So you'll see in my older videos, a lot of the time the weekend uploads have similar clothing choices and similar backgrounds to some of the videos in the week because I was 
double stack in some of the easier videos. Like right now, a video that just be me talking. So we're looking at the first of the month for the new releases and also any leak videos. I'd probably stack up with a similar video because they're not normally as long to edit. I have a feeling this is probably gonna be a long video. So this one's gonna be a bit different, but still after this video, I aim to start sorting a bunch of these Lego pieces. I still have three trays of them and then another one of the broken down Marauder, which I'm still yet to sort. So hopefully I can get on top of that today. But to think I've been doing this for nearly 350 days at least out of the year, recording a video to upload for the next day for two days time is really, really cool. I really am almost lost for words with it and it couldn't be possible without all of you. So this video is taking a look back at that year. We're not gonna go through every single milestone because I'll probably end up doing a similar thing around Christmas for 2024 and 2023 has already been covered. The video is out there. It was around New Year, I think, when we looked back at all the big milestones and we've definitely already hit a few bigger ones this year. I have a list of bullet points on the screen because I know that I can just get distracted and waffle for hours. So hopefully I'll be able to cut some of that out. And the first one, just says thank you again this wouldn't be possible without all of your support and recently on my short you probably know the short that i'm talking about the one where i customized the turret on the atte walker well right now i think that's at in fact rather than thinking where that's at i can get it up and tell you exactly where that's at 276.6 thousand views on that video and 171 of you have subscribed after seeing that so if you're watching this video welcome to the community and thank you so much for everyone that has watched that that is crazy how much that has blown up i'm used to you know getting 15,000 on the odd which is still a lot a lot of people but to think as a west ham fan this is over four times the stadium capacity which just absolutely blows my mind. As of a few minutes ago, we also hit the 200 comments mark on that video. Not only to have people watch it, but the interaction is so, so fun. In fact, I'm at the stage now where YouTube isn't even notifying me of every comment, which is probably good, otherwise my phone's battery would suffer with the notifications. I actually have to go into the comments to see a lot of them, which is why if you wondered why your comment wasn't responded to until a few days later, I only just realized that this morning, and this is now the third day of the short being out. So there were a lot of comments from day one that I hadn't even responded to. I'm not ignoring any of you. I'm just not seeing it through the YouTube algorithm. Well, the notifications algorithm specifically. As I said, this is gonna be a long video, so I'll try and work through these points fairly quickly. They're in no particular order, but first off, I'd like to speak about the BrickLink store. Now, I filled it with a ton of parts, but I'm getting a load of requests for the magazines, which I am looking into. I weren't able to find any Vader ones, so I guess the earliest would be Sabine. And I might try and pick up a few, but I think, again, it's going to be a popular one that I personally am going to struggle to find. But it is something I'm working on, shipping the whole magazine to territories that Lego don't publish it themselves. I still don't understand why it is that the magazines don't get published everywhere. Perhaps it's not popular enough or they don't deem certain countries would sell as well but that is definitely something i'm looking into right now i'm also considering clone troopers and army building minifigures so we're looking at droids clones possibly stormtroopers first order troopers i don't know exactly what armies you're all building but chances are it's probably going to center around clone troopers would you be interested in purchasing clone troopers because they're so accessible in battle packs, but the problem with battle packs is they also come with a lot of bricks, which I could whack separately in the store and you could just purchase minifigures and save on the storage space. But there are a load of different things I'm considering for the BrickLink store and it's only gonna grow as we continue to, well, find cheap sets with decent part out values really. But I've noticed there's been quite a few questions around clone troopers. So if I can get a really good sale, because I've had quite a few sales for my own personal collection, then I'll definitely try to pick up a few different clone battle packs. And again, as long as it funds itself, I'm really happy to be selling 
basically anything on the BrickLink store. But first off, we do need to sell some of the parts we've already got because I've only got that one drawer unit of space. And speaking of improvements, the Discord has grown so much in the last month. It's truly amazing to see where it's already gone. And we only have a handful of members. So if you would like to join the conversation, definitely check out that join button and have a look at the perks between the two memberships because not everyone's going to want every set of instructions. But talking about the leaks and having a dedicated space just to talk about and have a conversation with multiple different people rather than having a few different comments threads that you're saying the same thing in between is really, really cool. And it's also a way to have a two way conversation rather than just leaving a comment. You can share images of your Lego, your latest purchases. Perhaps it's a set you've rebuilt and we actually have a memes channel now for Lego memes, which was requested by my partner because I've now added her as a moderator for the server. And that is going to be a ton of fun. I'm also really getting into the groove of mock building, which you'll know a few weeks ago I said, I think it was like the Fluttercraft and a few other builds at the time really ignited that spark for mock building. And hopefully we're gonna steer away from the norms of just minifigure scale and turning a Lego Star Wars set into something else. I'd really like to explore turning a non Star Wars set into Star Wars sets. And it comes back to the sales and discounts. If I can pick up a non Lego Star Wars set for what I consider to be quite cheap, I'm probably going to pick it up and put my creativity to the test and build something from the Star Wars universe. Because looking at all these new sets, there are so many ideas, but the trick of it is really finding Lego for cheap. And that is why I want to make my instructions either free or a lot more accessible and give them out to someone like members. The lowest members tier gets all the instructions because Lego costs enough. And there are some issues like I've mentioned with Rebrickable, you can't discount sets once you've already made them worth something. Most of my instructions are only worth two pound. I think I think I made all the one pound ones free for May the 4th this year. So I've got a few two pound ones that I could probably reduce to one pound, but it doesn't let you go any cheaper than that. I wonder if I disable them as premium mocks and upload them as free instructions that might work, but that's a lot of work on Rebrickable. And I've got a history of Rebrickable just being difficult to work with, and it's nothing to do with Rebrickable or any of the members of the admin team over on Rebrickable. It's just a lot of work to put into it. I have uploaded, I honestly didn't count yesterday how many mocks I uploaded. It was probably a lot, you'll see a number on screen now. And in total, I'll be honest with you, that has earned over a hundred pound. Not quite a hundred when Rebrickable takes their 10% and PayPal takes their about 20%. I think I get about 68% of the funds of this going into my account. So we're not at a hundred pound yet, but that's quite a lot that has mostly gone into my Lego city. And if you know the cost of some of the parts, you could probably break that down into how much has gone to the roads, how much has gone to something like the street lamps. But whilst I've been making instructions under the name Master Moldy on there, I've only really had two bumps that you could call issues. The first one was me not uploading instructions in the first place. I wasn't getting there in time, so other people were designing mocks, not necessarily based on my videos, but after my videos went out and because they got the instructions up first, there's not really anything Rebrickable can do about it. They beat me fair and square. Since then, pretty much whenever the video goes out, I will have already uploaded my instructions ready for them to be checked and uploaded to the site. The second issue was a legal thing with a Lego logo, which fair enough, I jump around using the Lego logo as well because I know Lego don't quite like it. But on YouTube, so many people use it to try and get clicks. I really don't think it makes a difference on my videos personally, but you can understand why people use a logo of a company as big as Lego to try and get some attention. So this is actually my third push with Rebrickable, I guess. It's not like I've given up and completely stopped using the site and become anti-Rebrickable at any stage. It's a way for me to get my instructions to you for cheap, which not only appeals to all of you watching these videos, 
I've had some people that have come over from Rubricable that have no idea I've made videos, which I think is really cool because it's like having a whole new fan base. But at the end of the day, it's only a passage for me to get my instructions through to you and hopefully one day we can have something like a Discord or perhaps even a Patreon where I can just upload all of them for a mixed low fee and they can just be easily accessed, not by anyone, but at least by all of you's watching. I don't think I could make this video without talking about my first daily upload and that was adding a custom nub to the Tenu Jedi Temple and at the time the video did quite well compared to all of my others. It was a review of the Tenu Temple which I picked up, there was a damage box at Smith's which was really nice. I think I got it for about the discounted price you could pick it up for now. It was like £10-£15 off on release day, that was really cool. And then I built a custom nubs out of Stitch and I think this review really paved the way for how I do reviews because it reminds me of my recent Ghost and Phantom 2 review where I'm not just taking a set, looking at it, telling you everything that you could get really off the Lego site. There's no point sitting through watching a 10, 20 minute video when you could get the information looking at a few Lego images, but creating the custom minifigures, showing you what parts might be able to be used for other sets is really what I enjoy about the review. It's taking a set and saying, what now? What can you do with it? Does it go on display? Does it scale to a few other models? Is it like the ghost, a massive ship in universe that you don't want to think about scaling it up? And also the value of it, how much Lego are you getting? Not based on piece, but based on the weight of the actual Lego bricks, which we're noticing a few trends in that. But going a step above and beyond, just looking at the set and taking a look at what you can actually do with the Lego. You can see in my Ghost and Phantom 2 review, which is probably my latest new set I've reviewed. So that's the best reference point for comparison. I took the blue pilot, which you could probably also get away with doing the one from the E-Wing in Shin Harty Starfighter versus the E-Wing Starfighter. Added an old Zeb Aurelius head to it, and you've got yourself a Zeb figure from his appearance in the Mandalorian, which works really well now that we've got Hera, and we've got Sabine, and we've got Jason, and we've got Chopper. And the only minifigure that we need now is an updated Kanan, perhaps because the Rebels minifigures really aren't that cheap. But I do think instead of the young Leia, a young Caleb Dune would have been amazing. But it's really interesting to see them reviews were almost a year apart, and yet they're not really too different from each other. Don't get me wrong, the camera angles, the quality, and the actual content of the video was definitely a lot better in the Ghost. I'll leave the old review of the Tenu Temple in the description or on the end screen perhaps if you would like to check it out. But if you can't make it through the video, I completely understand. In fact, the desk that I was working with at the time has been upgraded twice over the course of that year. The desk I'm working with now is probably about three times the size and means we can look at the larger ships without having to somehow cram the Veneta that is the same size as the table in a very tight camera angle. The only thing that hasn't improved for this video and yesterday's video is the lighting because the lights actually broke down, which I wasn't expecting. It was still in its 30 days return period, so they've been shipped back and hopefully we can get some better lights in the near future. But it's a long process trying to get that refunded so then we can spend that money on some new lights. So for now, we're back to just the simple ring light, which was all I was using a year ago. But the big difference is my knowledge of the editing software has grown so much that I can make this screen look like this just by changing the exposure. Like I said earlier on in the video, at 10K, I want to review a UCS set. I've already got a Master Builders Cantina, and though I didn't review it on this channel, you've seen my diorama based on it, which really is a review of the Master Builders series. I've just taken a snapshot of the full build and squeezed it into the room that I've got, and now I've even made it modular, which in an essence still carries over that Master Builder series cantina. But I definitely want to review a UCS, possibly the 8080, possibly something else if there is a newer set at the time, or we could even do something like the Razor Crest, which is a really cool model that comes with quite a few exclusive minifigures. And then at 100k subs, I haven't forgot about the minifigure scale Star Destroyer 
And at the minute, no one's built anything bigger than the 2013 LEGO almost life-size X-Wing. I'm not quite sure how big it was exactly. I think it was something like eight meters long and the minifigure scale Star Destroyer, I think is like 8.5 meters. I can't remember the numbers exactly, but we're going for a world record sized Lego Star Wars build, which is even longer than the Moff Gideon Cruiser that was at a convention that was circulating quite a few months ago. Planning to do that at 100K subscribers. In fact, I'm looking at making a minifigure scale portion of the Star Destroyer with the new Star Destroyer set, which I think could be pretty cool. That is in the works in the background. Hopefully I can show you in a few weeks time. After that, I really don't know where we're going. Let's get to 10K first, and then we can decide all the other milestones we'll want to hit. But it's crazy to think we're over a quarter of the way there. As I said, 2.5K subscribers. Thank you so much to everyone who has subscribed. And if you've already hit the subscribe button, be sure to drop a like on this video to show your support. I greatly appreciate you making it to the end of this video. I think I've talked for long enough, and it's time to sort some Lego. So I'm going to get straight into sorting this out. Hopefully I have it done today and may the bricks be with you always. 